Alright everybody, what's going on? It's Voodoo51292. Today we're going to be doing a very special video um, about one of the more unique features about my channel, which of course is my game reviews, um, which the channel started off being just game reviews. But just to let everybody know again, the point of my game reviews is to offer you guys good, honest reviews um, and scores from 0 to 10 um, that are, again, not overinflated and they're not uh, I guess underinflated, um, even though that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but you know what I mean. Um, it basically is to give you guys a way to get good, honest reviews from an average gamer so that you don't have to listen to IGN's nonsense or GameSpot or any of these other people who don't put in any time to these reviews. They play the game for 15 minutes and then they give a, re a knee jerk reaction and a knee jerk review without bothering to take the time to break the game down or to really, um, you know give you guys a heads up. In my opinion, you cannot give a, a game review in three minutes like IGN and all these other companies do. You just can't do it. It's not thorough enough. So, uh, and of course, like I said, I rate my games from 0 to 10. But until this point, I've had no kind of rigid, um, written down uh, scale um, and criteria for this scale to give these games the scores I do. I just kind of off the cuff um, you know, think about what score should I give this game based on some other scores that I've given, and I give the game a score. Well, what I've noticed is, unfortunately, without the use of a of any kind of criteria, some of the scores I have given uh, have been out of proportion with other scores, um, and some scores have gotten the shaft as far as uh, I've given them way too low of scores than they deserve. They deserve higher scores, but uh, I gave them too low of scores, which I'll talk about later. Uh, and so what I decided to do was to write up my scale and write up my criteria for each range of scoring. That way um, I can use this scale. All of my scores from now on, therefore, will be in proportion to one another. Uh, and they will be um, definitely honest scores. Not too much and not too little, but they fit right into my criteria and every game will be proportional to one another. So what I want to do for you is read my ranges of scores and my criteria for each score so that you guys have a clear understanding of when I give you a number between 0 to 10 what it really means about the game and what I really think about it. Okay, So let's go ahead and start talking about my ranges. Okay, uh, From 0 to 0 0.9 okay, I've labeled these games as disastrous. Uh, game is virtually unplayable, no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Never even think about putting this game in your console. That's my explanation. Basically, that means if I give this game a 0 to 0 0.9, anything less than 1, it's an abomination. It never should have been created. Um, and if you put this game in your console, your console should explode in your face, causing third degree burns and possibly taking a couple of limbs off simply because you even considered trying to start this game. I know that sounds brutal. But that's the honest truth. If it's less than a 1, then even touching this game is bad and you shouldn't do it, okay? Um, a 1 to a 1.9 I've labeled as horrendous, just barely above disastrous. It's almost unplayable. It's possibly, possibly only has one redeeming quality, and that's grasping at straws, and it's not worth your time. If it's, if it's again, if it's between a 1 and a 1.9, the game is awful, it's horrendous, um, you may boot the game, but you probably don't want to play any more than between five to, ten min five to ten minutes of it. It really doesn't have much to offer you at all, and it's a waste of your time and don't bother. Um, if it's a 2 to a 2.9, I believe, well, this category is pretty damn bad. And I said, a semblance of a game can be seen, but overall the game is terrible. Um, it's got very few redeeming qualities, no real plot, and broken gameplay. So basically, you might be able to look at this game and say, oh yeah, I see where they, you know, what they were maybe attempting to do here, but what they were attempting to do is not even close to what they actually did. Um, overall, like I said, the game's terrible. It's not fun. Um, it has very little redeeming quality, very little thing, very few things you can point to. Uh, it's where this game actually stands out. Really, you're not going to have fun playing this game, and again, it's probably better if you just don't waste your time. Um, a 3 to a 3.9, this category is bad. Um, 
There are maybe a couple of moments where the game is slightly enjoyable, but these moments are few and, and short-lived. Still broken gameplay and not a good experience overall. So again, this game is better than a 2. There may actually be a couple of moments in this game where you may catch yourself actually having fun. Um, but, again, the gameplay is broken. Um, there's not a, a good riveting plot. You know, there, there may be a lot of things holding this game back. Um, it, it's possibly worth, worth playing through it one time. It's possibly worth borrowing it um, and playing at least half of it. Uh, but again, the category is labeled as bad. Um, you know, again, overall the game is bad. Um, but there are a few things you can point to um, to where the game actually does stand out. But like I say here, these moments are few and they're short-lived. Um, so moving on, a 4 to a 4.9. This category is called Almost an Average Game. Uh, the game seems like it might be fun, but poor execution prevents this. Slightly broken gameplay, poor diversity in gameplay, and overall rather unenjoyable. Uh, some moments, however, do stand out, and there is fun to be had here. So basically, a game between 4 and 4.9, you can have fun playing the game. There are points in the game that are fun, and uh, it's almost, like I say here, an average game. Um, there's just too many things holding it back to where overall, it's a bad game. Um, but, like I said, um, you know, there are moments, um, you know, a, a few moments where the game is actually fun and, uh, you know, you may not hate yourself for playing the game, but, um, again, overall, it's below a five, it's below average, um, it's almost an average game. If they had, if maybe one or two things were... You know, there are things that they wanted to do to make the game unique, but again, poor execution of these things prevents the game from being ranked higher. So, there may be some cool elements in the game, some unique things in the actual game that you can see, but the execution of these things is just under the mark, and overall, it's not very good. Um, the next rank is one score, it's a 5.0 right on the dot, and that is a completely average game. A uh, game is very bland and lackluster. A game overall may be enjoyable, but it's more of a time killer. No lasting impressions are made and it's easy to forget. So if a game is a five, overall the game may actually be enjoyable. You may, you know, have a pretty decent time playing the game. It may be pretty fun, but it's extremely average. Right in the middle of the scale of five, right in, you know, so the game is right in the middle of bad and good. Um, there are things that the game does well, there is an equal number of things that the game does bad, and it all kind of balances out to, uh, you know, no lasting impression is going to be made by this game. It's stuff that you've seen before. Um, it may be stuff you enjoy, but it's not stuff that's groundbreaking. It's the same old, same old. Um, again, there's good, there's bad, and the game is just very blah. It's, you know, it's like a, it may be worth a playthrough. It may overall be actually an enjoyable game, but... There's really nothing that makes this game uh, stand out over other games. All right, the next uh, rank is a 5.1 to a 5.9. So anything above a 5, but not a 6. Um, and this category is slightly above average. Uh, the game is very average, possessing all the qualities of a straight 5.0 game, but possessing a couple of elements that make the game stand out and leave some impression. So basically, the game is... Again, very average and lackluster, just like a 5.0 game would be, but there are maybe a couple of things you can point to and say, wow, that's actually unique, that's a little bit different than what I've seen before, I liked that, I liked how they did that, whether that be a certain gameplay mechanic, whether that may be a graphical style, um, a plot twist or something like that. Um, so overall, again, the game is pretty average, but there's one or two things you can point to and say, oh, you know, that's pretty interesting, and I haven't seen that before. Um, so now we will move on to the sixes. Uh, a six to a 6.9. This is ranked as simply above average. This game possesses a few unique elements, but overall, again, is lackluster. Definitely fun to be had here, but no groundbreaking elements and things that hold the game back ultimately. So, basically, uh, again, overall, the game, again, is is... is sort of lackluster, but there's definitely fun 
to be had in this game. This game may be a pretty decent game, a pretty solid game, um, and there are, you know, maybe several things that you can look at and say, oh, okay, that's different, that's unique. Uh, basically, exactly what, what 6 is from 5, a, a step up, and that's exactly what this game would be. It would be a step up over the 5 game. Ultimately, you know, it's again it's it's not anything groundbreaking it's not you know revolutionary but the game is fun the game's enjoyable maybe and you know there are several things like I said that you may be able to look at and say that's unique and I like how they did that uh, now we're gonna move into the realm of, of games that are actually pretty good okay um, the sevens a seven to a seven point nine it's moderately above average um, this game ventures to, into the realm of a good game and includes some but not all of the following elements. Uh, a good driving plot, variations in gameplay, uh, good game mechanics, and good graphical design. Uh, the lack of some of these elements prevent the game from being scored higher. So basically, in the sevens, this is a good game. This is a game that you will most likely have fun playing. Um, and uh, it's a game that's probably worth at least one playthrough. Um, and it contains some really good things. Like I said, some of these elements, maybe it has a good plot, some good gameplay, some variations in gameplay, but it doesn't include all of those things. It may be lacking in some areas. It may have a, a really good um, gameplay element, but the plot is not is not there. It's not very good. Uh, maybe the game's repetitive. Uh, the gameplay is good, but there's no real variations in the gameplay. It's all kind of the same thing. Um, and so forth and so on, but it's a good game. It's it's you know moderately above average, and you're looking at a game here that's pretty well made and uh, is pretty fun. Okay, um, now eight to an eight point nine. This is significantly above average, uh, and this is a very good game. Uh, this game is overall very good, but falls short on a few items. Ultimately, this is a game everyone should take a look at, and it's a possible game of the year contender. So if I rate a game in the eights. It's a very good game. Okay, this is a game, like I said, everybody should take a look at. I think everybody could benefit from playing the game. It's got really good gameplay elements. It's got variations in gameplay, somewhat um, a, a decent plot. Um, and, you know, there are a few things that the game falls short on, but not a whole lot. You know, there are some things that you can pinpoint and complain about. Um, but overall, the gameplay is good, and overall, it's a very good game. And games rated in the 8s could possibly, uh, you know, the upper levels of the 8s could possibly be considered for a game of the year at the end of the year, okay? So now we're moving into the exceptional games. Uh, a 9 to a 9.9 .9 is near perfect. Uh, this game is just a few steps away from perfection. Um, it has it all, good plot, good gameplay, variations in gameplay, good environment and atmosphere, etc. Uh, everyone should play this game. And it's an automatic game of the year contender. That's right. If I rate a game in the nines, it means that this game is automatically going to be considered for game of the year. It takes a lot for a game to be rated in the nines. Like I said, it takes all of this. Good plot, good gameplay, variations in the gameplay, good graphics, good atmosphere, uh, uniqueness to the game. Um, all of these things, you know, replayability factor possibly. All of these things need to be there. Um, in order to to rate this game in the nines, maybe one of those things is is uh, it falls a little short on. There are maybe just one or two little things that the game falls short on um, to be ranked in the nines. But that is, it takes a lot for a game to be in a nine, and therefore, if it is in the nines, it's good enough that this game should be automatically will be considered for a game of the year at the end of the year. Okay. And then, of course, the last score is a perfect 10, and of course, that means it is perfect. Uh, the game is flawless, one of the best games in the annals of video games. And if you don't like this game, you don't like video games. No complaints about the game, period, and it's an obvious automatic game of the year contender. So if I rate a game of 10, which who knows if that'll ever happen, um, that means that the game is absolutely flawless, it's perfect. Um, obviously, it's going to be very hard for that game not to win game of the year. Um, you know, it's it got everything I've already talked about, and it does everything well. Um, there's really nothing that you can point to 
and be disappointed with. Uh, great value for the $60 and an overall amazing experience. And again, if I rate a game a 10, I think that if you don't like this game, then you probably shouldn't play video games because you don't know what's good. So, that's my rating system. Now, um, you know, now, of course, like I said, I have ranges, which I just went over, but of course there's decimal points. Um, only one decimal point, I don't do all this .75 and all that. It's just, you know, .3, .8, something like that. And basically what the decimals mean is, based on the decimal, it tells you how well I think that game fits within that category. Um, so let me give you an example. The difference between, say, an 8.1 and an 8.8. .8. If I gave a, give a game an 8.1, it means it meets all the requirements for an 8. It's a very good game, you know, a few things holding it back. But if it's an 8.1, it means that it's got, you know, definitely, like, the max amount of things wrong with it to stay in the 8s. And if there was one, just one more element that was lacking, it would fall into the 7s. But... It is an 8 quality game, but just barely hanging on. If I give a game an 8.8, .8, it means that the game is definitely an 8, and if there were only maybe one or two things that were improved, the game could bump into the 9s, because it's that good, but there may be one or two things that are just, just holding it out of the 9 range. So, you have to pay attention, of course, to the range, but also the decimal number I give, because it's going to let you know you know, if I think the game is just into that category, or if I think the game is just on the verge of bumping to the next category, but not quite. Um, so, that's my range and scores. Now, there's two games that I want to talk about that really made me boil down and do this, okay? Two games I want to talk about who got the shaft on the scores, okay? And that is Crisis 2, and because of Crisis 2, Brink. And let me explain. Crisis 2... Um, of course, was the biggest controversy on my channel. I, I hated the game. I had, I think, like a seven-part review of Crisis 2. I had a Crisis 2 montage video up of why the game sucked, and everybody ripped all over me for it, um, and blah, blah, blah. Well, um, I gave Crisis 2 a rating of 3. Now, based on this scale that I've made, the game does not deserve a 3. Okay, it deserves to be ranked higher. Um, the other game is Brink, which I actually quit playing in the second chapter because I didn't want to play it anymore. It was that bad. Um, but I rated that game a 1.5 because um, I was trying to keep it in scale with Crisis 2, which was already too low. So both of those games are out of proportion with everything else. So what I'm going to be doing is making two separate videos, revising my score for Crisis 2 and Brink. I'm not going to be revising the game review. The stuff that I said about those games is going to remain the same because that's how I feel about those games. But the scores aren't in sync with this scale, okay? And to give you an idea of when time period I made this scale, the first review I'm going to be doing using this scale is Infamous 2, okay? So, I will be doing, like I said, the two score revisions for Crisis 2 and Brink. I will be raising their scores, not significantly, but I will be raising them to fit within my scale uh, and give proportionality to them. And the first official review I will do using the scale is Infamous 2, and every review after I'll use the scale. And again, what I hope to do with this scale is to let you guys know that every game I review and every score I give is going to be carefully looked at and it's going to be placed into the scale, meaning that there will be proportionality to all of my scores. All the scores can be related to one another um, to see which games are better than what and to show you that I do put the time in and the effort to make sure these game reviews are as good as they possibly can be. That way you can use my reviews as the ultimate source for you if you're thinking about spending your hard-earned money on a game or your valuable time on a game, I want you to be able to use my reviews as your source to know whether or not this game is worth your time and whether or not you want to play it. Um, given from an average gamer's perspective, not the major gaming media or any of these other people who don't take the time and don't care to give you the best quality. I care about doing that because I understand about money and your time and I want to make sure that you have a good reliable source to go to like myself for these game reviews. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, this will be the first video in my playlist for game reviews so everybody can watch it 
first and understand my scale and understand how dedicated I am to these reviews. And uh, again, be on the lookout for the Crisis 2 score revision, also the Brink score revision. And uh, the first review I will be doing um, after this is Infamous 2. So all the scores before my Infamous 2 review were not used making this scale. I'll stand by most of those scores, like I said. But just so you know, those were not given using this scale. Okay. So I'm Voodoo5192. Thank you for watching. And uh, I hope you enjoy the game reviews and find them as useful as I hope they are. Um, Alright, so uh, I'll see you on the channel and I'll see you throughout my game reviews.